them and welcome back to a new video. Today I have a very exciting video for you all. I have a thrifted slash second-handed book collection video, I suppose. I love books, which you probably already know by now, and I wanted to share some of my most precious copies that I got from the thrift store because I love second-handed books. Definitely um, classics, such beautiful editions. When you thrift them, you find new editions that you hadn't seen before. You find editions that you've been looking for that are old and they don't sell anymore. You just find such treasures and I love them. These books are only the English ones I have, except for one classic that I have in Dutch, but not my um, Dutch books because I thought that might not be very interesting for y'all. Um, and it is mainly classics because I just love classics. So I've divided it into three piles. I have classics that I thrifted, I have historical fiction that I thrifted, and then I have books that were given to me but I know are also second-handed. And I'm really excited to start. Um, I'm not gonna talk a lot about the story itself, just show you the copies and what I think of them. So let's go because it's about to be a long video. <laughs> first of all, I have my classics. First of all, maybe the least interesting thing, I have this classic... Oh, I'm filming with my light and I didn't realize that it might be bad. Yeah, wait, I'll go like that. Um, what was I saying? Four classics, American classics. I don't have a lot of American classics, like these are my only ones. So I'm really glad that I have them. This has Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, which is the reason I bought this. It also, it also, <laughs> it also has um, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, which is really exciting because I've never read anything by him. So that's fun. And The Red Batch of Courage by Stephen Crane. Honestly, never heard of it. You might be shooting at me right now because Maybe it's a very famous book, but I had never heard of it. Um, and then Billy Bud by Herman Melville, which is the one that I'm hoping to read this week or next week. I haven't read anything of this yet, but it is a beautiful copy with beautiful papers and a beautiful font, and I'm super excited to read in this. Next, I have a few Thomas Hardy novels because I love Thomas Hardy. I read Death of the Durbervilles earlier today. Earlier today? What? No. It's late, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I read Death of the Durbervilles earlier, earlier this year, that was a struggle, and I loved it so much that I wanted more of his novels, so when I went to the thrift shop, I decided I would look out for some Hardy novels. And I found, first of all, Far From the Manning Crowd, um, in this beautiful penguin edition that you probably know because so many people have these and talk about this and I love them so much. I think they're beautiful and I want more of them. I only have like two, I guess. Yeah, two. So I'm still collecting those. Um, this is one of the treasures that I found at a thrift store that, thrift store that they, I think, don't sell anymore or at least not here in Belgium. So I'm really excited about this. I must admit, I'm not too big of a fan of the font. It's nice, it's not bad, but you know, <laughs> but I still like these editions just for the cover. It just gives such a Thomas Hardy vibe and I'm super excited about this one. The next one I have is Jude the Obscure, which I literally don't know anything about, except for the fact that it's about Jude the Obscure. <laughs> um, but again, this cover is beautiful. This is from World's Classics, Oxford World's Classics. And it's also a beautiful edition. It has the same yellow as Far From The Man In Crowd has, which I think is cool because it's not the same edition, because, but it has the same color palette, um, which I think is really nice. And I just love the cover. It's beautiful if you ask me. It has the man and the horse. I suppose that's chewed. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Next, I only have Wordsworth classics left. Um, so let's start with the odd one out. Um, and that is Samuel Butler's The Way of All Flesh. Had I heard of this before I bought it? Absolutely not. Did I read the back and was I obsessed? Yes. Um, this is the first book out of all of these that isn't from a secondhand bookstore, but just from a secondhand store in general. This one, 
I don't know what it is about. I know it's... I said I wasn't gonna talk about what these books were about, so let's just forget that. This is a World's World classic. I have no idea what collection, but I think the cover is so pretty. And it might be a reason why I was drawn to it, but also because it's set in the Victorian era. And it talks about the rural things that happened there. I'm really excited to read this. I've never heard anyone talk about this, so if you've read this, let me know what you thought of it. And then the three famous words word classics, black ones. <laughs> the first one that I ever bought in these editions from a thrift store was Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I have read this. And I really liked it. It was my first Dickens. I'm currently reading my second one, which I will talk about later on in this video. We all know these covers aren't beautiful, but these are cheap and I don't mind writing in them. I don't mind traveling with them. I like cheap books because you can just do anything with it, you know? That's why I like paperbacks. I love paperbacks because you know, you're not feeling bad when you ruin the cover or when you spill your tea on it or whatever can happen to a book. Um, which is a reason that I do still like these editions, love them even. But we, I mean, look at that cover. That cover really isn't it, but... I would still recommend it to people starting out with classics who want to buy their own classics but don't want to spend too much money on it. Great, 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 great. I love it. <laughs> Next, I have a very ruined copy of Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, which is shiny. I still don't know why some of them are shiny and some aren't. Like, so weird, but um, this is a very short one that I just like. It, the back, the back, <laughs> the back is quite ruined, but I read this. Um, don't have a lot of feelings about this book. It was a fun, quick read, but not something I will remember all my life. But it was nice. Uh, again, horrible edition. I don't know what the cover has to do with the book. Okay, maybe kind of. Um, and then the last one in this edition and also from this pile is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, which actually I don't think the cover is that bad here. Like I think it kind of matches the vibe and the theme. Um, the book, <laughs> love it, love it. I do think it is amazing. You see I've annotated it with pencil, I don't know. Um, I did that a lot, I made a lot of annotations in this book and I didn't mind because it is a paperback and we love writing in paperback novels and we don't feel guilty about it, which is why we like these. Um, I just love it, love the book, love the experience reading it. I literally read this last week, <laughs> so yeah, that's this one. Now we've come to our second pile. So it is either my historic... Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I'm forgetting one. And that is this one, which is indeed a Dutch version. But it is a Dutch version of Charles Dickens's Barnaby Rudge. Which is a slightly less known story, I feel. Um, I mainly bought this for that. This is the reason I bought this. I want to buy more old books if I see them in thrift stores. Also beautiful drawing. I love illustrations in books. Like another reason to buy these ones is that they always have the up. They always have the illustrations and other books just don't, which I don't understand why. But anyways, I didn't buy this because I'm planning on reading a Dutch version of a Charles Dickens novel, but I plan uh well, no, but I bought this because I think it looks pretty and I want to collect more of those cute little classics. This one is also from a second-hand store and not a second-hand bookstore. That's this one. Oh, it's kind of falling apart and it's really sticky. I don't know what happened to it, but anyways, that was that pile. Now moving on to historical, mainly fiction, one well, non-fiction, but mainly fiction. Oh wait, no, I have one classic left. I don't know where to put this one, that Poet Society. I put it with the historical books on my shelf because I don't have room in my classics shelf. Is this a classic? I don't know. I think it is. I think the movie is a classic and this is just a book version of it. Um, really loved it. Also from a second-hand store, not a second-hand bookstore. And I think the copy is cute. It's a cute little book. It has like a big ass font. Um, I read this in one day because it had such a big font and only 160 pages. But I love it. So now, actually, let's move on 
to historical fiction and non-fiction. First, I have a series, a part of a series, that I actually bought online that it was second-handed. And that is, wait, I'm gonna switch over. That is Outlander and the three other novels. Um, so it's Outlander, Dragonfly in Amber, Voyage and Drums of Autumn, all by Diana Gavilon from the Outlander series. I watched the show up until season four because the other ones aren't on Netflix. I know season four also isn't on Netflix, but I watched that on another way, but I'm not doing that with the other seasons. But I am planning on buying the DVDs once they are completely done filming. But for now, I have quite some books to read. I have yet read Outlander. And that's it. I haven't read the other ones yet, but I really, really want to. Um, these editions are really cute. I don't know what they're from, but it doesn't matter. It has this one. It's the first one. It has just cute text. I think the font is really great and it has a great size. It's like the pocket version of these. You can't really call them pocket books because they're thick. And this is the thinnest one of them all. So that shows they all have like around a thousand pages, which is scary, but then again, it's Outliner and I love Outliner and it's so page turning. I would recommend it to everyone. I actually wanted to read Dragonfly in Amber as well this year, so I don't know if that will still happen, but watch out for my books I read in 2020 video at the end of the year to see if I did read this or not. <laughs> but we're not done with Outlander yet. I also have this one, which I found at the same second-hand store that I found my other books and it's beautiful. They literally, that store doesn't have a big book section. Like if you want thrifted books, you'd better just go to a thrifted bookstore um, because like they don't have a lot of books in the second-hand stores. But this one, this one was there and I'm just so excited about this. This is... Um, a Canadian early version of Outlander. It has the original picture that was on the original book. This is not the first print because the letters, the font here are it's different but it's the same picture. This is the Canadian version and I think that is amazing. <laughs> I really do. I think this was published in 2001 so it's really not, yeah, October 2001. Um, so it's, you know, one of the earlier editions. And I really love it. And next I have two royal books that I do have from my thrift book store. That wasn't a thing, but um, those are these two. Well, first talk about this one. This is Victoria by Daisy Goodwin. This is the book written by the creator of the television series that I haven't watched, but really want to watch because the book is so good. I love the book. This is... You really can't see this is thrifted really. This is like so... When I bought this it looked like it just hadn't been touched and I think this is so pressure of precious. I mean <laughs> obviously I love Victoria because I love reading about the Victorian era and I think if I want to understand my books better I need to learn about the history of those times, which I really love doing. I do love history and definitely 18th, 19th, 20th century. This is a modern day book. I mean, it's written not very recently. I don't know when it was written, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot actually, even about Belgium, which, you know, is fun. I would recommend it to everyone. It is like mm, fiction, but then again, there's so many true non-fiction things in here that just make it so interesting and of course you're reading a story that isn't real like everything that's said in this we know it's not real but the main lines of the book are so it's really good i really would recommend it to y'all and then next i have Alison ware's children of england which I haven't read. <laughs> um, I've read the preface and it was a lot, a lot of information because this is non-fiction but like a lot. Look at that, look at the font. I mean, come on, come on. And it's like 400, almost 400 pages. I really want to get around to reading it because outside of the centuries I just said I was interested in, I'm also just interested in England and Scotland and its history. Um, and how they influence each other and all that, but 
not specifically only from the eras I just mentioned, also from the studios, which I'm really excited about. And then last but not least, I have a whole pile of books, of which I know they are second-handed, um, and I got them from someone that I actually don't really know, <laughs> um, but she knows my dad and they started talking about reading and how I like to read and ever since then she's been like dropping off books which is so nice and so sweet. Um, she's probably not watching this right now but if you are, thank you. First of all we have Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre which is a very weird edition, I literally don't know. It's an Ever Everyman's Library edition but I don't know anything else except for that. <clears throat> it is a nice edition though, like I really like it. Even though it is hardback, I still like it. Jane Eyre read it up until page 300, 300, and then quit. And I think that was because I was getting into a reading slump and it was summer. I read this during the summer, spring actually, which is stupid because look at the cover. I mean, can't you tell it is not a spring book to read? I think I should just try this again next year during the fall, not this year, because now I'm still kind of pissed about me not reading it. I also really hate Mr. Rochester, but maybe that will change when I read it for a second time, but I mean, I've gotten so far and I really liked it up until the point I quit, so I do really want to give it a second chance. And definitely Charlotte, I do want to read Shirley and Villette sometime next year. Um, Preferably before I give this one a second chance because maybe if I give this a second chance and I still don't like it Maybe I will be like, oh, well, I'll just don't like her works and I'll never read her again Which I don't think will be the case. So that's this one still really grateful for it though And then I have literally my whole Charles Dickens collection <laughs> um, uh, I love them. I let's start with this random edition that I have of Signet Classics um, This is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, as I said. Um, it is a pretty cute cover, yeah, and I really like it. Also, I do think the light has extremely changed, because if I look outside, it is like dark now. Um, but anyways, that's why we have my light. Um, this one is, yeah, just cute. Great font, I'm super excited to get into it. I don't think I will be reading Oliver Twist anytime soon because there are other Dickens novels that I want to read more badly. <laughs> One of those novels is Great Expectations. Um, whoa, damn, I should calm down, I'm too excited. This is also in these beautiful Penguin Classic editions that I still don't know the name of. It's this beautiful edition. Um, I have no idea what Great Expectations is about. I think, no, that's Oliver Twist. I wanted to say, um, oh no, it's this one. It's about Pip who earns a big fortune. Suddenly he was a, yeah. So as I was saying, um, I don't remember what I was saying before I got interrupted. This is just a book I want to read. <laughs> and next I have two of the most beautiful editions also from Penguin, Penguin Popular Classics, and those are A Tale of Two Cities and David Copperfield. Look at them, look at them, they're beautiful. Nice thumbnail. <laughs> um, currently I am reading, wow, currently I am reading, great sentence, I am currently reading A Tale of Two Cities and I'm only at page 60 so I really can't say a lot about it, but it's very confusing so far, but I'm starting to understand it and I really like it. The cover got me so stoked. I love the cover. It's beautiful. I, I adore it. I really like the cover. And then I have David Copperfield, which also has a beautiful cover. Very different, but very pretty. Um, I don't know what this is about. I just know a lot of people consider it their favorite Charles Dickens novel. It is also very long. It has like over 700 pages. Um, also, these editions have a really nice font as well, as you can see. And I just love the old look they give, but then again, they like match so well. The only weird thing is that this one is white and this one is yellow, but they're cute and I love them and I wanna read this one soon and finish this hopefully soon as well. These were all of my thrifted or second-handed classics. Also, oh, and other books. Also almost all of my books. I'm looking at my bookshelf right now and there's a lot of books gone. 
on the ground around me. Um, but I hope you liked this video. I really liked sharing these editions. I just love watching hauls and collection videos and I thought this one might be nice as well. I am super excited about all of these books and I would recommend y'all to go out to a thrift shop if it's safe where you live and buy tons of books because you know we all need that. Let me know in the comments what your favorite editions are of books and if I don't know them maybe I'll check them out and find a new love. Mine of the books I own I think they're these penguins. No, I think they're, no, definitely these ones, these penguins, yeah. And I love the Oxford classics, the way they look, but I don't own any. So those are mine. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!